work through this question for the first time with me, how you would work through it, right? So read out loud kind of how you would approach this question. And then I'll have you kind of do the whole question by yourself. And then, right, um, I'll kind of work you through how I want you to work through each question. Okay. Um, so I did kind of watch your video beforehand. So I did appreciate kind of, um, you know, how you were working through this. So first thing I'm going to go do is, so which of the following pharmacologic treatments is most appropriate for this patient? So then we've got lithium, uh, flux, fluxetine, mm -hmm. uh, apra, <laughs> zolam, uh -huh. uh, methyl phenidate, uh -huh. and aripiprazole. Okay, mm -hmm. so we've got so we got lithium. We've got an azole. Um, I'm not sure. I don't I haven't heard of the other ones yet. So yeah, that's okay. And we'll keep All kind right. of working through together. All right, 25 year old man. Uh, He's uh, at his primary care. Okay, so through past three years, um, he's very energetic, talkative. Uh, let's see. And that was over the last few days. Uh, he's had some sadness, low energy, decreased interest in activities. Um, Okay, he's had some major depressive episodes, uh, and then he's had some manic ep episodes. Okay, uh, symptoms, they have not caused significant social or occupational function. So my, When I when I read this, so I'm thinking like uh, some sort of psychological disorder, like a like a manic depressive disorder. Um, I really haven't covered any sort of psychology yet uh, sure. in the first year, but I mean, I know that I mean it sounds like kind of like a bipolar disorder, um, and I would say I mean lithium sounds kind of like my gut is telling me lithium. Okay. Um, okay. I would rule out the azole just, be, but I don't, that might, I, I don't even know if that's, that might be a psychological drug that I just haven't heard of. So, uh, all right. So you want to stick with this as your final answer since it's your gut? Yeah. I don't have any other reason to change it so. okay so let's let's talk about this okay so this is a cyclothymic disorder right chronic mood disorder with uh, ups and downs right so you have a little bit of hypomanic and depressive that don't meet either manic or any major depressive disorder and so first right so let's kind of work this together right so you you re, you did great right and like i said getting an answer right or wrong is really not uh, when you're doing questions it's not the main purpose of the question Okay, really is to learn from the question, right? Especially since, you know, we're starting out and you're starting very, very early ahead of, you know, ahead of the curve, kind of already tackling step one questions, which is great, right? So missing questions is going to be pretty normal, especially if you start early um, and haven't seen some of the material. And so don't get discouraged about that. Um, getting questions right or wrong is not the main objective. It's did you, number one, did you follow the test taking strategies, right? Number two, are you learning from the question itself, right? So are you learning about the diagnosis? Are you learning about the symptoms about the diagnosis? And are you learning about the treatment of the diagnosis, right? So you did that great. Number one, right? You're going to read the question first, which is pharma pharmacological treatments is most appropriate in this patient. You scan over the answer choices. So you know that it has to do with um, some kind of psychiatric question here. Um, read the question and then, I mean, uh, read the case next and highlight what's uh, clinically important. So the reason why I highlight age that's going to tip you off of, you know, some diseases are in younger folk, right, in their 20s and your 50s and your 80s. So the age is going to matter a lot, especially when you, you know, do a question or even talk to a patient in real life. Age is going to matter a lot. So 25 year old male, right, primary care physician. So, you know, it's not an acute setting, if that makes sense. Right. So it's not an emergency department or anything like that. Concerned about his fluctuating moves for the past three years. So it's on and off. It's chronic issue. So knowing if something is acute or chronic is going to be highly useful to figure out what your diagnosis is. Um, he has periods of feeling highly productive, talkative energy lasting a, a few days, 
right? Followed by episodes of sadness, low energy, and decreased interest in activities. So if you were thinking about mood, there's some up days, there's some down days. That's how you've been thinking. And kind of, since you know, it's a psych issue, you know, okay, there's some highs and there's some lows. These episodes do not meet criteria for major depressive disorders, right? Meaning that it's not low, low, right? And so since, you know, you haven't gone through psych, right? One of the things that um, for major depressive disorder is kind of a sick e caps, right? That's the mnemonic that you want to use, right? So um, sleep, interest, guilt, energy, concentration, appetite, psychomotor retardation, meaning kind of a depressed mood and suicidal thoughts. So usually the criteria is you need five out of these eight, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, yeah, five out of eight for over two weeks. That's the criteria for major depressive disorder, okay? Um, and you'll learn this for step one, you'll learn this for step two, right, on your rotation. So this is something, I, you know, obviously I'm, I'm not a psych psychiatrist, but I still even remember this, right, because this is super, super important for major depressive disorder. And then he has not experienced manic episodes. Manic episodes, right, um, characteristics are like, you know, fleeting thought, you can't sleep, you're up for days, right? They last for more than three days, right? And so these are very, very severe symptoms, right? Like people are up for 72 hours straight, can't sleep, um, bounce from idea to idea, they're kind of sometimes even incoherent, because they keep going, you know, their mind is, you know, um, traveling at a million miles an hour, right? Those are manic episodes, but they say that this patient in particular does not experience any manic episodes. So the ups are, you know, the, the lows are not so low and the highs are not so high. So in that kind of characteristic, this is kind of befitting cyclothymic disorder, right? Which is kind of, you know, if you were to, um, let me kind of draw this. Um, if you were to kind of draw on a, uh, on a curve diagram, right? Let's say this is, you know, your low is major depressive disorder and your highs are like manic disorder, right? Cyclothymic is kind of, you know, you're, you're sad and you're, you know, slightly overly happy, right? So the curve would kind of look like that, if that makes sense. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But of course, you know, if you are really, really depressed, then you're sitting down here all the time. If you have bipolar one, then you're sitting up here all the time. Does it make sense? So cyclothymic disorder is kind of this, you know, in between, right? So you get sad for, you know, a couple of days that is a little worse than normal, right? Like, of course, everyone, it's normal to get sad sometimes. It's normal to get happy sometimes. But these people with cyclothymic, right, they're a little bit sadder than sad, right? And they're a little bit happier than happier, right? And so you're running kind of this cyclic kind of ordeal. And um, I want to say it has to be greater than two years to fit kind of the criteria for cyclothymic. But anyway, so... So you always, after you read, you think to yourself, if you obviously look at any labs or imaging, which we don't have here, and then you ask yourself, okay, you know, picking, you always want to ask yourself, what's the diagnosis, right? Of course, you're early on, so you might, you know, you're kind of stuck at the diagnosis standpoint, right? So um, you always want to ask yourself, what's the di diagnosis, and the, the diagnosis here is cyclothymic, cyclothymic or thymia, thymic, right? Okay, so um, you know the diagnosis. After you pick your diagnosis, then you want to ask yourself, okay, what is my gut answer choice? And then lithium would be good for, you know, um, bipolar, right? Like bipolar one with manic episodes. He doesn't really have manic episodes, so this won't fit well. Um, fluoxetine is SSRI, right? And this is going to be good for your diagnosis here. Uh, Alazo, um, aprazolam is a uh, benzo, right? Benzos are good uh, for you know, certain disorders on an acute setting, right? And especially, you know, even alcohol withdrawal is good for, right? Um, but not going to fit here. Methylphenidate, this is going to be for, um, you know, ADHD, things like that. Stimulant, uh, uh, airy, uh, airy piprazole, right? That's going to be an uh, atypical antipsychotic, so more for, you know, schizophrenia and things like that. Okay. Daniel, what is a SSRI? Is that it's... Yeah, it serotonin, uh, selected serotonin uh, receptor inhibitor, okay? okay. Um, so, or selective serotonin retake inhibitor, I would say. Okay. So they're a class. Um, so just as kind of a test taking strategy, you're going to learn these drugs later on, of course, but for your SSRIs in psychiatry, right? It is one of the main big guns for almost every, um, psychiatric disorder, except a few, right? So schizophrenia is going to be different. How do you treat that? And bipolar is different, but almost everything else is going to be treated with the SSRI. So on a test taking standpoint if you're ever kind of like oh i'm kind of confused like i don't know the diagnosis 
I'm not sure where to go. Uh, picking an SSRI um, is a pretty safe bet. Okay. Okay, great. Questions, concerns about that? No, and I'm excited to kind of go through these drug classes and kind of get a better idea. I think I'll have a much better chance at this question. Then, so. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And and kind of, you know, I know we're starting early and, um, you know, don't get frustrated as we do questions, right? And getting questions wrong um, versus right. I always tell my students, especially when you're, you know, picking up new material, right? Learning about new material, don't focus too much or right or wrong so much, right? It's okay. So how close did I get, right? What did I know, right? right, and so right. Then you, yeah, you just kind of add to that. And that's going to add to your repertoire so that, you know, for, for you, it's going to be, oh, okay. Uh, I got to figure out, you know, the diagnosis is even to compare them with, right? And then you figure out the treatment after. So um, don't worry too much about right or wrong at this stage. So, so we talked about Siggy caps. So that's, uh, could you, could you tell me that one more time? Yeah, sure. So we talked about Siggy caps here. Okay. So sleep, like if you have lack of sleep, right? right. Um, so just think of, you know, someone who's depressed, right? Um, lack right. of sleep, right? Um, they can't sleep very well. Interest, right? They have no interest in things, right? Guilt, they feel guilty about things, right? Energy, low energy, right? Uh, appetite, a, a lot of uh, appetite, right? You, you're not able to eat, you have no appetite, right? Because you're depressed. And uh, they, the P just to fit Siggy caps is psychomotor retardation, it just means like depressed mood, right? Which makes sense, right? um and then um suicidal thoughts okay gotcha okay. and so you need five out of eight of these right and usually they're pretty good on step one and on step two that they'll describe it right they'll be like oh yeah you know patients hasn't been eating can't really sleep um doesn't like to you know draw anymore and she used to draw um she feels really um lethargic throughout the day right has you know bad concentration and then this has been going on for about a month so that fits criteria for major depressive disorder if that makes sense got it okay so Thank if you're you. just you know if you just have low energy you don't eat and lack of sleep but everything else is fine that doesn't fit everything yet so Good question. Any other questions on this one? Nope. All right.